welcome to the project of animation on scroll in this project we will build this one let me make a screen larger right here so when i scroll down we got this beautiful animation and we will know how we can add more and make more styles with that animation so uh, this is the page the empty page that we will fill right now the first thing we will add here uh, as you can see from here i got all the CSS we need, we'll, we will just add the CSS that we will need for the animation. We can go here and make HTML5, okay. And then right here, we can connect between this file and the CSS, like that. And inside the body, we will add the intro. We can add here, or we can make a title. And then we can make it H1. And inside that H1, we can make for animation on scroll. Let's see what we have on the screen. Okay. It's not responsive, but it's okay right now. And then after this part, we will add for the animation container. So we can add some space right here. Add a comment. Animation container. Okay we don't need this space inside here we can make a dev and give it a class of container as first inside this container we can make a row the row that will contain the columns as the same as here we can scroll from here this uh, row one column and one column so here we can give it column six and then another one for the column six or we can just type the content here, Lauren, and another Lauren. We can copy this right now and paste it here. So when we go to this page, this is the page that we built right now. Then we have here for a column one and the column two inside a row. So this is the HTML. In the next video, we will add for the JavaScript. Good luck and see you in the next video. Okay, and now this is time to add the JavaScript. So before we add the JavaScript, let us go here to the CSS and add some that we need for the animation. So here we will add the movement of the animation. We can just add here at the beginning, but let's add it after we add the JavaScript. So we can go here and make window. Before we do anything right here, I want you to search for on internet about as something that will make us able to make a function on scroll. I'll give you a hint. It's an event listener. Do you remember that when I click, I want something to happen, like add event listener click and then a function. It will be the same as here, but instead of click, it will be a function that for the scroll. Okay, uh, pause the video and try to do it. Okay, and now, we can make window dot add event listener and this one will be for the scroll and then we need a function but we can give a parameter here and leave it empty because we don't need a parameter right here and then we can make let row which is the class of row document dot query selector row and then another and another one right here for the position of the row paste row position and this one will be for the content dot the uh, the content no it's the row right here row dot get pounding get pounding client and here i'll show you what is the get pounding client rectangle okay so right here this is the row that we need to target for the animation right it's something like i am drawing a rectangle around this area and then i will select if i need the top the right the left or the bottom but in our case we need a top because we are making a scrolling from the top so right here we will use the job so again 
it's something like the get pounding the get pounding plant rectangle i am drawing a rectangle around this part and then i will select i need the top the bottom the left or the right but in our case we need the top this is this function and then let's make for a window position which is equal to the window dot inner height and then right here we will make a function if the co if uh, the position of the row is smaller than the window position i will add the class of active else i will remove it we can make here if the row position is smaller than the window position window window position yeah so i want to add the class of active to the row row dot class list dot add the active else because if i want to go up again and then go down again so we can copy this one and paste but this one will be removed So this is the inner hive. When I scroll down and the row position, which is the rectangle of the row position, become smaller than the uh, the window position, I want to add the class of active. Let's make it with console log to be more clear. We can make here console dot log the first. for window plus the window position and then we will make here the first for the row position row position and then this one will be for the row position and then we will copy this one paste it here and here this will be the second and this will be the third uh sorry the second also second second third and third we just need to add some style right here so this will be the animation movement so let's make the animation movement here i don't want to make it for uh, a, a difficult for us because this course doesn't require the CSS knowledge. So let's make it much easier. Opacity of zero, transform to scale to zero. And we want to add some time for the function, all to seconds. And then right here, we will add the class of active, which gives me the same as here, but the opacity of one and scale of zero. Opacity of one or the opacity anyway, the degree of the appearance of the text. So if I make it to zero, the text will have no appearance, like transparent. And the opacity of one will be solid. And transform scale is the size of the text. So if it's zero, it's something like the, the zero multiplied by the size of something. And then it and then it will be zero but in this case one multiplied by the size of something so this the size will be one and also you can make it four or five for an example but in our case we just need the one okay so let's go here and see what we have on the screen scroll down so it's working right let's reload the page so we can use the inspect from here okay so let's scroll down and now we can scroll down again and then let's see what's going on here let's make it from here the first for the window is 815 which is constant right which is constant always and then right here the position from here to here so i am getting the top the position from here to the top okay so now it is 
for the initial state is 845.7. Okay, and then right here when I scroll down again, for the second state, the, the row position here height is 643. Uh, sorry, it's here, yes, yeah, 643. But now it is 815 for the window. So now it's still the window is greater than the row position. So it will animate. And then we're gonna scroll up again. The third position window is smaller than the row position. That will make it get no animation. And then the it will remove the class of active. And then when I go back, uh, the second here, the row position is smaller than because here the all window is 815. But from here to here it is smaller because I am getting the top to here. So now this is smaller than the window. This means that I will make the animation. And this is how the animation in the JavaScript works. Okay, and that's all fine. In the next project, we will move to a new one, which is more that we need for the professional projects. So, good luck and see you in the next video. And now for the dice game. So let's do it for the dice game here. The first thing that we will do right here is to add the HTML, the thing that we will do in this video. So here, container, which will contain the dice game. And then we can make here a dev with class of player. And this will be for the player zero. So we can add here player zero. And this one will be the active for the initial state. So we can make it player active. And then inside here, we will add h1, give it a class of name and id of name zero and then after this part we can type here player one and then after the h1 right here we can make for p dot score that's containing the score and an id for score zero let's make this one to be 21 right now and then the dev with class of current, which is the current state right now, or the current value. And this one will be for p with current label and make it to current. And then and another paragraph for the current score. Current score. And let's make it now to equal zero, but we need an id here current zero okay so that's all for the player zero we can copy this one to make it for the player one right here one 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 and this to be player two let's make this for three and this to be one for an example okay so this is for the players after this we need to add for the new game for the roll dice and for the hold. So let's make it here. But first the image of the dice. Dice1.png. And we will give it a class of dice. For the positioning and for the size. And then right here we will make puddin. Give it a class of puddin. And puddin new. And this one will be for new game. And another one for roll dice and hold. Roll. And here, roll. Dice. Hold. Hold. Okay, so let's see what we have on the screen right here. So everything is working fine. This is the HTML. What we need to do in the next video is to add a JavaScript. So in the next video, we will add for the constants and the initial states. So good luck and see you in the next video.
So now let's add some JavaScript code to our project. The first thing we will do here is to add script. And then inside here, we will make the first constant for player zero. Okay, and player zero, but for the JavaScript, making a number at the last make is a problem. So we can just make E at the end or any number like A equal to document dot choir selector for the player zero and then for the player one we can just copy this make it here this to be one and this to be one and then we can make another constant for the score const score score uh, score zero a which is equal to document dot get element by id no not get animation element by id that one would be for the score zero and, and another one for the score one one and one okay and then we will make for the current for the current value we can paste this here current zero a and this will be current zero and another one for the one a one and one okay so that's good and then after this part what we will do we will add a constant for the dice and for the buttons. So let's make it here const of dice equal to document dot choir selector for the class of the dice. And then constant with a button new equal to document dot choir selector for the button. new and then for the puddin roll oh let's make it now for the puddin hold equal to document dot choir selector for the puddin hold const puddin roll equal to document dot choir selector for the button roll okay so these are for the constants let's make now for the, the initial state and this will be the last thing in this video so what we can do here is to add a comment for initial state and then right here we will make a function and call it initial state okay and then right here we will make for the scores will be equal to zero and zero but we don't have this so we just need to add some things here let scores and these scores will be changed with time according to the roll dice and then the current score we will also need it each time we add uh, each time the user will roll the dice the current score will increase by the number which appears on the dice and then right here active player and the last one for the game in the case if the game is true we are playing in the if the game is over the game will be false and then right here the current score will be equal to zero the active player will be also equal to zero which is the id of the first player and the game will be equal to true okay and that's good and then what we will do else in the initial state i want to think with you in the initial state we want this and this 
and this and this could be zero and also we will need to remove the dice the dice image the uh, the class of player winner from the player one and player two and also we will remove the player active because this is the initial state but it will be removed from the player two and added to the player one because this is the initial state that the game will begin from so here we will make for score dot text content equal to zero let's check if it's working we can make the screen larger no uh, we get a problem here uh, what is the problem okay we can recall this function here so now it's working when we recall the function okay so as of this part right here we can make for the score 1a we can copy this one 1a and then we need for the current 1 and the current 0 current 0 current 1 okay so let's check it out let's make the screen larger so now it's working okay and after this part what we need to do as i told you we will need to remove the dice so we will give it a class of hidden which added in the css that has display to none we can make here dice dot class list dot add i will add the hidden let's reload the page okay so now it's hidden and then for the player zero and also for the player one we will do the same we will remove the class of the active of uh, the player winner remove player winner copy this one for the one and then right here we will give the player active to the player zero and remove it from the player one add remove this one will be for the player active which the player active has a different background color than the basic one so as you can see from here those are white but for the player active it has a darker background color so right here i will remove the player active from the player that has the id one okay that's good player zero okay and then right here i just want to see what's going on here when we reload the page no i think we got something wrong in the css we can go to the css and see the player active no uh we need to search the player active we don't have the player active i think i made it with uh, two dots i think so the uh, player no it's not there in css it's okay i'll do it when we end this video and then anyway that's all for that we need to, to do in this video i will add the player active myself okay and now this is done in the next video we will add more we will add how to switch players so when uh, the player gets one it will switch to another player so we will do that so good luck and see you in the next video and now instead of adding for the switching player right now i want to add for the uh, the rolling function so we can add a comment here rolling the dice okay and then right here let's think about what do we want to do when the when we roll the dice we want to check out first if the playing is true or not so if it's uh, true which is the game right here if the game is true i will roll the dice but if it's not true i will not roll the dice 
or even if it's uh, false, I will switch players. We will make if it's false, we will switch players. And then right here, if is true, if the game is true, I want to make something right here. I want to, when I click on the roll dice, I want the current score or the number on the dice appear randomly. And this will be done by adding math floor and math random as we did before. And then after this part, we got for the uh, the remove hidden. So we will remove the class of hidden from the uh, dice so it will appear. And also we will get the source of the dice. The source of the dice will be the same as the math random. So the math random needs to be added inside a variable. So it will be used also for the source of the dice. Let's do this part and then we will move to another part. We will make here. Oh, sorry, not here. Put in roll dot add event listener on click so i want something to happen function and we don't need a parameter right here sorry we don't need a parameter and then inside if game so if game is true and then what i want to do here the first thing is to generate a uh, is to generate a number that will appear randomly on the dice const random dice and then right here to be equal to math floor because we needed to remove any decimals math random and this to be math random multiplied by six but we want to think about something here. The math random, uh, the math floor of the math random might be zero, right? So we will need to add plus one, plus one. Okay, so now this will not be zero. And then after this part, we want to display the dice so it will appear on the screen. We will make right here the dice dot class list dot remove i will remove the class of hidden and then after this part i want to change the source of the dice so the dice dot source will be equal to as we learned before this one if i if i want to use the dollar sign dice and here where it gives the dollar sign okay like that and this will be the random dice okay we just want to test what we did but we just need to add png here so let's click on roll the dice yeah it works fine okay and as this part as a rule of the game we want to check if the dice is not if the random dice is not one so we can add here if random dice is not equal one so i want something to happen right uh, what i want to do here is to change the current score and the current score will be added to plus equal or let's make it yeah equal current score plus dice but I don't need to type current score plus random dice. We can make something different. We can make here to be positive equal random dice. And this is equivalent to current score equal current score plus the random dice. And then right here, we will make document dot get element pi id pi id. And we will make it here the current And then we will add a dollar sign here. But we just need to make it like that. Okay. And then right here, this will be according to the active player. 
active player and then right here the text content will be equal to the current score and also no that's all for this part i think else I will switch players but we will leave this empty right now because we don't have it so now we can roll the dice and hope everything is working fine yeah this is working fine and we can make else switch players but we don't have this now so we can just make for the put on hold but this is okay for this video and in the next video we will make for the put on hold Good luck and see you in the next video. And now we will add for the hold. So we can just add a comment here and make the hold. So, okay, from the rules of the game that when I click on the hold, the score will increase. This means that I will increase something in the array of the score. And then if this element inside the array is greater than or equal to 100, it means I won. So let's make here put on hold dot add event listener and make it to click. And we will make a function right here. The function doesn't need any parameter. So parameters are empty. If game, so if game is true, so here I will add the current score value to the active player's score. So we can make here scores, the, the ID or the element of the number of the active player plus equal the current score. Let's add some space here. Okay, and after this part, what we want to do here is to change the text content of the score to be equal to this one the new one stored here which is the score active player plus the current score so we can add some space right here we can add here document dot get element pi id and then right here we will make like that because we will use the dollar sign because it will be according to the active player ID here score the dollar sign like that and this will be active player dot text content and the content will be the scores for the active player and then after this part right here we will check if the score is greater than or equal to 20 or uh, sorry 100 if scores for the active player is greater than or equal to 100 so now what i will do here is to is to finish the game by making the game equal to false and give the dice the class of hidden so let's do that as first game equal to false and the dice dot class list dot remove i will remove the hidden sorry i will add the hidden not remove but for the test let's make it 20. okay and then after this part we will uh, we will add the class of player winner to the uh, player that won so let's add some space right here the document dot query selector for dot player and then the dollar sign the active player and i will class list dot and i will add the player winner player winner okay and then right here we will remove the player active so we can just copy this line paste it here the player active but in this case it will be remove 
remove okay and this is good right now what we just want can do right here is to go and check out this part when it's greater than 20 so uh okay it doesn't work one well when it's greater than or equal to 20. so we want to check what's the problem right here if the score we can check right here from the console scores active player zero yeah uh, oh we didn't press hold so press hold and now it works okay so now the last thing we want to do here is adding for the uh, for the uh, something like the toggle the players but we will do that in the next video so good luck and have fun okay and now we want to do for the switching the players we want to do here as first we will add else and let's make it to 20 else switch players the same as here we can copy this else function and be used here delete this and this okay and now what we want to do here is to add the function of the uh, of the, the uh, switch players so let's do it right now what we just want to do here is to add a function and call it switch no no not like that switch players okay and for this parameters we will leave it empty so let's make the parameters empty right here and open the brackets and then what we want to do after this part is to make the document that get element pi id and we will change the text content to be equal to zero so as first the document dot get element pi id of the current player current the active player and then after this part what we will do we will make for the text content to make it equal to zero and then after this part we will make the current score equal to zero and then we want to check here if the active player is one i will make it to zero if it's zero i will make it to one so we can just use one if and one else if the active player is equal to one so i will make the active player to be equal to zero and else so we just have zero and one so i don't need to make else if uh, this here to be active player equal one okay and then after this part what we can do we can add toggling because i want to toggle the player active from the player one and player two so we can make here class list dot toggle i want to toggle the class of player active And then after this part, we can make player one a dot class list dot toggle, and I will toggle the player active. Okay, I hope here everything is working fine. And now we just need to add something here. If I click on the new, when I click on the new, I want to start a new game. So we can make put on new dot add event listener the click when I click on it I want to go to initial state so let's see if it's working or not 
So this is the active when I roll the dice. Okay. Oh, it got one, so it moved here. I will get 20, hold. Yeah, I succeed. Now we can click on new game. So it started a new game and here it's new game. And when like that and I click hold, so it will get me like that and when i click it get me one so it moved back here so now the roll dice works and we have no problem with it right if you have any problem you can ask in q a i know it was a very difficult project but you must before you should have before you start this this project you should have read the instructions carefully and also try the game yourself several times okay and that's for the dice game in the next video we will move to the advanced projects good luck and have fun back and now we will add for the calculator project so this is the real project and this is the one that we will build together so here we got the html file and we just need to add some html code to end this video so let's do that right now here we will type HTML5 and then we need a connector between this file and HTML. So here we can type link for CSS and this is just called styles.css. Okay, and now we will add some HTML for this file. We can just add as first the grid of the calculator. And then inside it, we can make for the output, which is the output of the calculation. Output, and here inside it, we got two, the previous and the current. The previous is the one that will appear here. The current will appear right in here. So let's do that right here. Dev with class of previous. Previous. And we will leave it empty because it will be according to which is the content is according to the previous input, right? Which is not constant. So we will leave it empty right here and edit it with the JavaScript. And here we can make for the current. We can copy, paste, and this to be current. Okay, and here we can add data, data, previous. and we can copy this one and make for the data current the css added here we will not add it add any any uh, css code together so here what we will just do after the output is to add for the content this is one is for the output and this is the content of the calculator here we can make a pudding for the AC, this one. A pardon? We will give it data clear. And the class of span two. And then we will make it for the AC. And then we will add for the delete, which is for the for deleting one character from the output, the output of the current. Here we can make for dev. Uh, oh, not a dev. It's a put in for data delete. And here D E L. We can copy, or we don't need to. Yeah, let's just copy. And for the data operation operation and let's make it for the division okay just like that the data this one would be for the number and then we will get for the one and two and three two three two three after that we just need for the multiplication we can copy this line and make it for the star the javascript reads this one as the multiplication okay uh yeah okay now 
and then we will make four three numbers four five and six four five and six and this one will be for the addition copy and paste and then after the addition we need for seven eight and nine let's make for the seven eight and nine we can copy paste seven eight and nine and then we will make for the uh, subtraction copy this addition line paste it here this will be for the subtraction and then we will need for the dot and the dot here it will be considered as a number because it will be typed in the output as a number dot and then data number of zero and the last one for the equal data equal and then we will give it a class of span two and also equal equal okay so we can see what we have right here we got like that oh i guess we got something wrong but it's okay right now in the css and i will edit it myself okay and now we are done from adding the uh, the html and in the next video we will just add for some javascript code so good luck and have fun and welcome back in this video we will add for the constants and all also adding a number into this output so here i just changed this part to be two span instead of the span two and let's add some javascript right here script let's add some constants uh, we will need for VER current operand and the previous and the current which is to be printed here and the previous to be uh, sorry the previous to be printed here and the current to be printed here and we will need it also for the calculation previous so we need some variables to see to say them in order to use them in the calculations previous operand okay and then we will need a variable for the current operation why we need it because here when i click on three multiplied by six uh and then we got three multiplied by six but when i click on, on another operation for the calculation the three multiplied by six whatever the calculation or the operation method after it this will be considered as three uh, multiplied by six and will be printed here and then i will type the current here okay and here we can make const of put in number and we can make it equal document dot get query selector all oh no query selector all we need query selector all here right here because we are choosing from the data number which is this part i could use the query selector if i just make it without this one add the and add the class instead of using the data number and i can just use function with event but here let's just make it with the data number right here data number and then we will add for the operation put in put in operation after the operation we can add for yeah we have here for the delete let's add for the delete a pattern for the delete the same as here we got it for delete yes a constant for the equal equal and let's make it equal to document dot query selector but here we don't need the query selector all because we just get 
we just got one so let's make it query query selector and the same as here query selector because we just got one equal button and here data equal just like that and then we will make for const clear which is for clearing everything inside the output and also clearing the data which is the current operand the previous operand and the current operation clear and let's make the clear to be equal to document dot query selector and for the query selector we can just make it for the data clear just want to remember about this is yeah the data clear and then we can add for the variable of previous operand text var previous operand no we can just add operand text and let's make it equal to document the query selector the class of the previous so we can just copy it from here and then because we need here to change the html according to the input of the previous so we just need a variable here instead of typing all of that several times and this will be current we need a dot here current okay so this is fine let's now do for adding a number when i click on the button so we can just add some space right here add a comment adding number when clicking on a button okay so now we can make for a function let's call it add number because we're adding a sin single number so i don't need to type or i don't want to type add numbers and here we will make for the number button or let's make it for the put number parameter number parameter so we can differentiate between the constant and the parameter par is parameter open the bracket and here we need to think about it i want when i click on the uh, on the put a number i want something to happen but i got query selector all which making for each if i used a class or just make for i deleted the number and make class of number and then i can just use function with e but here we got query selector all with the data so we will use here the for each we can make put in number for for each for each parameter of it so we can just make here put in number parameter and then we need a function for each one of the data number i want something i want when i click on each parameter and event listener click we need a function and leave the parameters empty because we don't need parameters right here and then we can just make something to test it we can make console dot log number has been clicked we can open the inspect right here make just a screen larger than the usual open the screen up the console click on in number make sure it's working no it's not working as we expected so we need to check what happened right here okay so let's see what happened right here we got here for the function and a number okay okay 
right here function yeah we didn't call the function so we need to call it add number go pack reload the page make the screen a little bit larger click on yeah and now it's working when i click on this one it doesn't work because it doesn't got it doesn't have the data number okay and then after this part we need to change something right here what we want to change we want to change the content we can make right here and then we will need to change the content to change the content right here we can make four we can we don't need this console anymore we made sure it's working we can make here for the current operand text to be change it to equal we can make it to text content or inner html let's make it text content equal this one plus the put in parameter the inner html of it so let's see what we have right here when i click it's working but instead of typing all of this line we can just make it to plus equal which equi which is equivalent to what we typed before so this is the same we can make here okay it's working but we get a problem here when i click on this part i can click several times and i don't want that so what we just can do here if the prom parameter number parameter dot text content is equal to the dot and where the end right here and the current operand text dot text content do we have here a constant for that mm, yeah yeah it's already working right here includes so we need to make here includes if it includes the dot so i want here to return which is remaining here return when i make it like that it's something like don't do anything so we can make it before changing because it moves in a parallel sequence so if i make it right here this will be working before this one but if i make this one at the top it will be working before this line so let's save and reload when i click several times it gives me false so we need to know what happened right here i think we've made a mistake text content okay include the dot we can open the inspect right here let's reload the page let's click on it change it to false current operand text okay what happened right here we need to check this out yeah we can like that i'm sorry and here i hope it's working yeah and now it's working and when I click on this one, I can add in number, but when I click here, I can add just once. This is how we can use the F and return. Okay, and now we are done from this part. We just need to make the current operand equal to the current operand text dot text content. Okay, so now we saved this part as the current operand we can go here type anything and make for the current operand current operand and this will be equal to 64 but if i make it for the previous operand we don't get anything because it is undefined okay and now we added for the uh, add number and we he here we can add more than a number what we just want to do for the next step is to add for the operation button to make it work when i click on the operation button we got two things we need to think about right here and i want you to think about it which is the first one 
I need to add the one that I click on to here. So if I added this one, this will be printed here. And if I added this one, this will be printed here. And also, we got here, the previous will be printed here. It's okay, right? But the looks like here, let's delete. I make 33 and then click on times. The thing that will be printed here is 33 and the multiplication. And then I typed here the six. And then I get back and click on multiplication. So I want the first operation to be calculated, which is 30, uh, 33 multiplied by six. And the number that will be the output of this calculation will be printed here plus the operation that I clicked on for the new calculation, of course. Okay, so we will do that in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, and now we will add for the operation. So the first thing we will need to do here, or the first thing we will do is to add a comment. The operation parents. Okay, so we don't need to make a function here because it will not be recalled. So we can just make here the pudding operation dot for each because we are using here the data. And here we know how to use the function with event and also for each in case if you want to choose the for each or the function. And as an advice, you need to you need to try to use the function event instead of the for each when we are done from the videos of the calculator to practice on on both of them here we can make for the operation put in parameter and here make a function with that up in the bracket and then each one i want a function with that which is right here, the operation put on parameter dot add event listener. The event listener is the click. So after the click, we need a function with empty parameters because we don't need a parameter right here. And then what we just need to do is to make the previous operand equal to the current operand. As I told you, it moves in sequence and then right here i want the current operand to be equal none after this part we will make the previous operand equal to no don't need that right here it will be for the computation here we can make for the previous operand text text dot text content to be equal to the previous operand which was the current previous operand plus the operation put on parameter parameter dot text content so let's now see what we can see from this part Yes, it's printed here. And then what we just need to do here is to make the current text content to be equal to nothing. So what we just can do here is to make the current operand text dot text content to be equal nothing. Okay, it's working. Yes, it's working fine. And then what we just need to do here in case if I have here like that and then I type here I want when I click off here I don't want that right I want when I click here these will be calculated together and the output will be here and the new operation that I click on let's say it's the addition it will be printed to the output of the multiplication on this one of this one and the plus will be printed instead of the multiplication right here so we need to think about what we can do for this part we can use if condition 
if the previous text content which is this one contains an operation text which is here the current operation and we will make a variable for this part and i think we got it or we don't need really so we can neglect it yes so i want if the previous operand text contains this or any multiplication point i want something to happen what i want to happen is make the calculation but let's do that here so this will be else if it doesn't have i will delete the current and make the previous with the child with content but if the previous operand text dot text content includes includes let's make it for the subtraction or it includes for the multiplication or for the addition or the subtraction so i will make the calculation and else i will make the same way that we did for this code so here we will make for let let's make it final result or just result result right here and then we will make a console log but we don't need a console log here console log but let's make it to make sure everything is working fine so what we just need to do right here is to console log the current is plus the current operand plus the previous is plus previous operand yes this one plus the result is result okay so now this is good and what we just need to do right here is to add for the method that it will be calculated with so we need to think about it when we use if and else it makes a problem because I couldn't type else if else if else if right so and another solution for this part in our case we can make it with the switch and case so we got the switch and here let's explain it switch and it tells me you want to switch between what I want to switch between the text content of the previous so we can make here do we have a current operation or we didn't make it current operation but i think the current operation we make it empty right here so here okay but it tells me we got a problem right here so what is the problem the problem with the syntax so we just need to know what is the problem with the syntax okay we will check it out later okay but i don't think we make it for the current operation let's look for it the current operation we just made it here and here so we just need to make for the uh, operation text so let's make it here i think we can make it for where we're here okay current operation
operation and make it equal to operation put on parameter dot text content okay so now i want to go to the console log and see what's the problem with this part okay i'm missing before the switch body yes we didn't use the switch yet yeah this was the problem then let's see what the problem is we have the missing and what about now delete this one and now I, I hope we have no problem what about now we still get a problem okay missing after the function okay 86 there's a missing one okay this is not our case now we can check it out, check it out later so but we just need to search for what happened right here to solve it together missing this lot after the argument 86 86 uh, let's make it like that here and then see what's the problem now missing after the function body so let's check it out here what is it it's up in from the line 86 line 86 is up in here but it doesn't have ending so what about now missing after it okay so now it worked okay and after this part we can make for the switch in case but we can just test it the console log add as a beginning so here we can open the inspect make it 3 3 multiplication by 33 and dot and the current is like that but we just need to change numbers 10 the current is 10 the previous is 33 the result is undefined because we don't have anything to make it okay and now we just need to do for the switch and case for the switch and case i will switch between the content of the current operation so i will switch between the current operation and then i will open the bracket and here we got inside cases in the case of this the current operation is equal to that i will make that if it is equal to that i will make that so here we can make case plus and this is how it is typed so here in case if it's plus so i will make the result equal to the current operand plus the previous operand and then but here i need to give the line an order that i ended the line of the case this line is called break so now i break the case which is i ended the case and then i i am ready to move to a second case so here we will make case case of the subtraction and then we will make the result equal to the current operand minus the previous operand and then right here we also need the break the case of the multiplication for the case of the multiplication we can just delete this to save time and copy this from here and paste multiplication this will be a multiplication and then the case of the division we can copy or we can just make a new one right here the result equal to the previous operand divided by the current operand and then break 
but there's something right here that we need to add for the uh, the the uh, the switch in case which is default prick which is similar to the else in the if condition prick okay so what we just want to do here is to make it to change the text content and more we can make here where is the f condition the f condition is here so we'll make it after the switch we can make here we can copy this console log and make it here so result is now saved okay and now we can make for the previous operand text dot text content we can make it to equal the result plus the operation put on that I clicked on just after this operation. Operation put on parameter dot inner HTML. And then we will delete everything inside the current to try the new value, which is the new input. So we can make it here for the current operand text dot text content to make it equal to none the current operand to be equal to none because i will type a new value and save it the previous operand that i will make for a new calculation about is equal to the result because it will be printed here and this will be the result and then after this part, we will make the current operation equal to the operation put on parameter, put on parameter dot text content. Okay, so let's see now what we got on the screen. We can reload the page. 3, 3 multiplied by 10 right here and it is working right here the current is 10 the previous is 33 and the result is like that okay and now we are done from this part what we just not what we just want to add after this part is to add for the equal button the thing that will happen when i click on the equal button and this will be very similar to this part that i did right here and let's test right here like that plus uh, let's make it plus to 700 no we just got a problem here and we need to solve this part because it's ending in the wrong way and we need to solve this but we will solve it together okay we need to solve this first and test it again to make sure we got no problem and this will be done in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, hi and welcome back. In this video, we will solve the problem for what we saw in the last video. And this will be done by adding the parse float. And the parse float is a function that is used to accept the string. Because here, the code reads the numbers as a string. And then we need to convert them as floating point numbers in order to make them for the calculations because we cannot make something like a multiply pi p, right? So we need to convert them as numbers. Here, the code reads 1, 2, 3 as text, as alphabets, for example. And we just need to convert them to code or a number to make it for the calculation. So this will done by adding the parse float and below this video we can find more about the parse Here we can make a const Let's make this constant for brief. We need to make a shortcut right here equal to the parse float for the previous operand and then the constant of the current Let's make it equal to the parse float for the current operand and what we just have to do is to copy this paste it here here 
here and then this one to be pasted here 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 and here so let's see what we have now on the screen 33 multiplied by 10 equal like that uh 0.05 which is equal to that but we just need this number five plus let's make it by 40 and okay multiply or division by 2 25 and this will be for the 5 yeah we just need to make convert them together right here prev and current okay just like that 33 multiplied by 10 minus the 300 plus the 10 divided by 0 0.05 like that yeah it's working fine okay and what we just want to do right here is to make no we just done from this video and in the next video we will add for the equal pudding so i want you to try to think about it or how we can do that and in the next video we will do that together so good luck and have fun hi and welcome back and now let's add for the equal pudding i uh, don't think we need this console log again do we have another one right here we can search for it because it makes the page with a longer time for refreshing in the calculation so here we can make for the equal pudding we get a constant here for the equal which was the pudding equal but we just need to yeah we got a comment here we can adjust x and space right here equal put in and then right here we'll make for the put in equal equal dot add event listener and let's make it to click and that i want function to happen with the empty parameters we just need to give a comma right here okay so now we will make the same as this part so we can just copy this from here if it contains all of that that i want something to happen okay just like that what's the pro what problem do we have right here here so tell me we get a problem okay don't we have its ending right here where is the ending of this part where is the ending of this if tells me we have a problem so we can just delete this and see what's the problem do we have here the problem is starting from here what yeah it's not here it's here my bad okay and then we can just copy this if condition copy and make it here and then for the else i don't want anything to happen i just want to return so let's give this right here like that but we just need to change some code right here so let's delete this because it will not be the same right so here we can make the current operand dot text dot text content to be equal to the result because i will be printing the result right here for the current operand because i because this is for no calculation after it and if there is a calculation it will be printed as the previous and be printed here 
Okay, so after this part, we can make for the current operand equal to the computation or the result. And then we can make for the previous text dot text content and make it equal to none. And else a return. Let's make something like here. 10. I hope it works. Yeah, it works. And if I click equal to several times, nothing happened. And then when I go back and make it to 80, like that, divided by, mm, let's make it to 64, equal like that. Yeah, and now it's working. And now we are done from the equal pudding. What we just need to do as next in the next video is to make for the delete pudding. When I click on the delete, I want something to happen. I want to delete a, a character from the current. So I want you to think about this part in search on, on Google, how we can do that because we are going to use a new function for this part. I will give you a hint. If you don't need, you can close this video right now and search. The hint is I want to convert the current operand to a text and then slice. Well, sorry, I will convert it to a number. This will be done by adding the string, right? To string and then slice it, slice a character. And we will do that in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, and now we will need to talk about the method that we will do for the delete button. But before we do that, we just need to explain something right here. So here we can make a new file and call it slice dot html okay and we will open this file in google chrome not this one but this one it will be printed here okay so let's make html5 and then what we will do after this part we can add something like dev with class of demo and leave it empty and here let's add some script code we will add const of numbers and make it equal to one two three four and let's make the last number to be five Okay, so what we just want to do after this part right here is to make a const with, let's make something like the const of slice. And we'll make it equal to number dot slice one and three. Okay, we just need to know right here what's going on. What's going on here? We got this one, we got this array. And this is slice, not slide. The slide, the slice right here will will return to me between the one and three. So this is the one, and then two, three. So it will return from one to three. So let's see what we got right here, which we can make it to the slice or the document dot get element pi or query selector demo dot text content equal to the slice okay so let's see what we have on the screen right here so we got two and three which is two three four which is the numbers between the one and three like here one this is two this is the three and if i make it to four two three and four but what if i want to make from the first number but remove the last number so we will need here to make the zero right for the first number but in the calculator, the last number will not always be the same number right here, but the first will be always zero. To make it, there is negative one. Negative one will be printed in the code as the last number, whatever is 
the length of the array so let's make it here so here we got one two three and four without the last number and this is how it works okay so let's test something different const numbers equal to one two three four five okay so i want to convert this to a string in order to use it inside the slice so we can make it number dot to string string and then slice from o to negative one so here we got one two three four four we just need to remove this one okay so now we removed the five and that's what we will do in the javascript calculator so let's do that here we will make right here put in delete dot add event listener the event listener right here will be for the click and then i want a function open the bracket and then the current operand will be equal to the current operand which is the current operand that i saved dot to string what's gone to string dot slice zero and a negative one the same that we did and then the current operand text dot text content dot text content will be equal to the current operand okay so well, we just want to test this part right here three three and delete and now this is done and we want to make here console dot log the current is plus the current operand so let's make the screen larger and test but we click on right here we can make like that like that like that like that and then delete now it's like that again and again and again until i delete for the last number and then when i click here we don't get, we, we don't get anything to delete so it will return okay so this is for the delete button and the last thing that we will need to do is for clear button but we will do that in the next video good luck and try to do it yourself and then of course we will do it together but also try to do it yourself have fun we want to add for the ac what we just want to do for the ac when i click on the ac i want the current operand to be none or empty and also we want to make for the current operand previous operand current operation and also the current operand text dot text content and finally the previous operand text also to be none so we can make here we just need to add a comment right here put in delete character and the last one will be for the clear button okay and then we can make for clear or well put in clear i think put in no so what was it right here it was clear yes clear clear dot add event listener when i click so i want something to happen the parameters will be empty with empty parameters of course up in the bracket make the current operand equal to the previous operand equal to the current operation equal to the current text dot text content equal to the previous text 
dot text content equal to none let's test it and see if we have any problem here and then yeah it's being deleted and nothing making a problem and like that AC now it's deleted and then we can add new calculation to this okay so now this is working fine and we have no problem with the calculator and then we are ready to move to the the quiz project and we will start it in the next video good luck and see you in this project welcome back in this video we will add the html code and also an array for the questions so here the first thing we will do we can make the html5 connect between this file and the css like that and then right here we will add a body and we will give it an id of body because we will use it very soon to change the background color of the body and then we can make for the container the container that contains the questions and the answers and the start the, the next and all of that and then we will give it an id of question container okay and then after this part we will give it id of question with question okay and then we will add the answers we will give an id with answer puddings and let's give inside here some puddings like uh, like answer one so let's see what we have on the screen right here it was styles okay so here we got this okay we can add more if we need but now i think both with a class of answer no but it's okay right now i will edit myself but now this is for the html and we just need to add for the uh, the start and the stop button so we can make for this one okay here the question container and then this will be for the uh, control buttons okay and then the first one will be for the start button so we can make button give it an id of start give it a class of start button and also put in and this will be for the start we can now copy this one this will be for the next and this also next and this next so here we got the start and the next okay that's good and now we're done from the javascript what I just need to do is to edit. Do we have double body? Yeah, we need to delete that. Okay, so now let's add the JavaScript for the constants and for the array of the questions. We can make you a const of start. Oh, the script, right. Let's add some space right here. Script, let's add a comment of constants. Here, we will make the constants const of start equal to document dot query selector of the start button and then we will make for the question container const question container and let's make it equal document dot wire selector it was an id or it was an id so we can make it get element by id so we can add and remove classes from it 
the question we can copy it from here in order to avoid mistakes okay and then the question printed the question printed which is the question that will be printed here which is this one so let's do that right here const question printed equal to document dot get element pi id and this one will be four questions so we can copy it from here and make it here and then we will make four const answers equal to document dot get element pi id for the answer put in so we can just copy it from here just like that okay and then we will set for the next and the start const next equal yeah we got already the start here so here next document dot get element pi id we can make it for next okay and then we will make a constant for the party when we want to change its CSS according to the success or the correct or the false answer or the wrong answer. Constant of party equal to document dot get element pi the id element pi id. Okay, and this will be for the party. And then let shuffled and current number which is the current number question the number of the question okay and now let's add the constant for the question const question and it will be an array and inside the array we have four the uh, the questions and the answers and the answers will be array so we get an array inside the array the first element right here will be question what are you learning right now and then we will add a comma right here answer and this answer will be for answers a new array so here we will make a new one the first one here will be text java script and then we will make correct equal to true and then we will make an another answer we can copy this one make it html five this will be false then we can make the last one for the css three and make it also false and delete this comma so this is equivalent like i make a const or even an array let's make a const of array equal to something like two and three but here let's call this is the first element which is equivalent to this one here but inside this element i can make more i can add two parameters which is the question and answer so like i added here three okay so the two will be the three and the two will be the question and the three will be a new array inside this element which is the answers which is having a lot of text and html css3 and we will add more questions right here so i can select from the questions the question and from answers the text okay so now we can add a new one right here we can make here do you like winter 
we can make this one to be yes this one to be no and make both of them to be equal to true okay so we can make another one for do you like javascript do you like j s we can make this one to be indeed false and then we can create another one for kinda and then let me think about the last one we can add for this part we can make for not really not really okay this is enough let's see the console log and see if we have any problem no we don't have so this will have had the html the constants and the array and in the next video we will add more with this part good luck and have fun now let's add for the javascript the first thing that we will add for the javascript but we just need to go here in the html first and give this the class of hide in the css it has for the display of none and then right here we will get the height for the next because at the beginning i don't want them like that yes and after this part what we will do we can go inside the javascript we can just add a comment right here questions array okay and then I add another comment right here start the quiz and then after this part we can go for the javascript and add for this part we can make a function right here and call it start quiz open the brackets and we need to think about it what i want to do when i click on the start button so the first thing we can make start dot add event listener click and then like that okay open the bracket we just have mistake right here and after this part what we want to do we will make the current number to be equal to zero that will be taken like the questions and like that here i'm going to do questions dot the current number the id that will be taken from the questions array and then we will make something right here the co the question container i will remove the class of height class list dot remove height and then we don't need this anymore so we can just delete it from here because it will be replaced by something different okay and then after this part we will make shuffled and then right here we will use sort we will sort the array in a random number i'm gonna show you something right here equal to questions dot sort and then i will make a function a function with empty parameters and math dot random you know it's giving a random number between zero and one minus 0.5 so we can think about it here shuffled question sort i will sort the question i will sort by the positive order which will be starting from what are you learning right now to do you like javascript and in, in this case it will be a positive number so math random minus 0.5 it will be a positive number in case of the math, math random minus 0.5 is a negative number, it will be sorted by the negative from here to here. This is what the sort is used for. And then like that, this is good. And then we will remove, but let's make it later, not now. And let's make a console log. 
Quince has pen started. Okay, let's open the console right here. I hope we have no problem. We didn't call the function. Start quiz. We always forget that. Okay, start. Yeah, and now it's working and the question is appear. Okay, and what we just want to do also is to remove this one. So here. Add, but this one will be for the start. Yeah, and now it's working. And then what we want to do at this part is to go to a function which is called next question. We can make it to here. Next question. But this will be done in the next video. Okay, so just for now, let's make a function and call it next question. And the parameters is empty. And then we will make that in the next video. Good luck and have fun. And now we will do it for the next question. So the first thing we will do here is the reset state and the reset state we will talk about it when we reach it but let's just type it reset state right here and also leave the reset state empty so we can just make it here we can just add a comment right here we can add some space next question and here we can add a comment for reset state function and call it reset state okay just like that and then after this part we will make here a new function and this will this function will be typed in this video so here show question In the show question, I want to show the question, which is the shuffled, and the ID is the current number. Okay, and then we can add a comment right here, show question. And then function, copy this one, and the parameter will be equal to question parameter. So here, when I go to this part, it will show the question, oh, you want to make me consider the shuffled and the current number. So I will go to this one. And this parameter will be equal to this one. And then we want to make here question. Printed will be dot inner text or anything we can just make it text content I prefer always the text content equal to question parameter question parameter dot the question so I am getting here the question parameter which is now equal to this part right I am taking from the array the current number which is now zero and you wanna make you wanna make me go to this array okay we got no problem you, you told me to get the id zero the id zero is here right but you got two things inside this element what one do you want me to choose i want you to choose the one that is called question which is this one so i hope this is clear to you let's keep going if you have any problem of course you can ask in the q a and then after this part the question parameters and then right here we need to print the buttons to be displayed for the answers right so we got different different answers so we need for each to use h1 to be printed in the question answers question parameters dot answers because i'm checking the answers right now for each one 
for each one I will make this one for enter parameter okay and then right here we can make a const uh, put in and make it equal to document dot create element because I will create an element for this part for the put in I will create element uh, sorry this will be put in and this put in will be inside here the answer put in so I will append it then right here we will make put in dot inner html will be equal to the answer dot the text so let's talk about it here you make me go question parameter which is equivalent to this one right now and you make me go to the answers which is this one okay uh, but this is a whole array right so for each answer parameter so here for each one I want to give each one an ID no problem right but a constant for the pudding okay and for each one a constant so constant pudding I will create an element which got the tag of the pudding the pudding.enterHTML will be equal to the parameter and inside the text so you made me choose the text from inside okay so now after this part we will make pudding dot class list dot add add the class of the pudding and then let's see what we got on the screen when we do it like that start what are you learning right now okay so here we got the question we just need to make it appear for the puddings so let's do that right now we will make right here it was with the id of what with a constant of what for answers answers so we can just go here and make for the answers dot append child and append child right here will be for the pudding i will append the pudding so let's click on the start so here we got them all and it's working good right so here we got no problem with this part and when i click on this pudding i need to check something i need to check the select answer so we can make here pudding dot add event listener click select answer which will be a new function for this one and then right here we can add some space select answer okay so let's talk about this part and we will do it in the next video we can just make a function right here make it with select answer for e because we got different puddings okay let's talk about it and what we will do right here is we will make for the select answer i added the puddings and i added a question i need to make sure that the question is true okay so here the first thing that we will do we will make sure from here that it's true and then we will go to the select answer for the select answer e we will make a function that takes this answers and go to another function to to make sure if it is correct i will give the party pack ground color of green it's strong i will make it red and also it will check if the questions are over so i will restart the quiz i will show the button for restarting the quiz if not the question will be increased the current number will be increased and it will show the next question and that's what we will do in the next video we will just do for the select answer good luck and have fun hey okay, hi and welcome back and in this video we will be keep going and add the select answer but before we do that 
I want to test something with you here, so we need to explain it before we do it. i2.html And this also makes some problems for students. So, here we can make HTML5. And then right here, we're going to add something like, uh, let's add a dev with an ID of, let's make it ID ID in data columns is equal to three and also we can make data parent equal to number okay and then we can type anything inside let's open this file in the firefox it's from here here and here okay and then we will add a script here we can add script with const of id equal to document dot get element pi id for the id okay and then right here we want to take the info of the data to use it to be printed for the inner HTML of this one. So, to do that, we use something which is called data set. So, we can make here id.dataset.colons. So, we can make here the id.textContent equal to this one. So here we got the three, which is this one. And also we can make it for the parent number. Okay, so this is what we will use the dataset for. So let's go back to the index. So we want to make or we want to find the, uh, we want to find which one is the correct. As you can see from here, this was three. So three is correct, not two, not one. So we need to find which one is the correct. We can make here, we can make it from here, it's okay. If answer, answer parameter dot correct. So if it exists. So what I wanna do here, put in dot data set dot correct equal to answer parameter dot correct so i will find which one we is the correct so this is good right now and then let's move to the select answer the const selected answer you will make it to e dot target because i told you before if we are using function with event, we will use the target. And then right here, we will make a const for the const for, let's name it correct. Correct equal to the selected button. Selected answer, sorry. Selected answer dot data set dot correct. Okay, so we just want to take this one and make it here. Okay, so now this is good. I am taking the correct. And then after this part, we will give, we can add a comment here, giving peg ground according to the answer. And this will be the function of the set or change background. Let's call it change background. And we will use here two parameters document dot body and the correct, whether it's one or zero. And then right here, we want to make something right here. If the questions are over, I will make the restart button. 
which will be equivalent to the start but we will just change the inner html of the start and make it restart we can add a comment here for end of the questions so here we will make if shuffled the length of the shuffled minus one because it's starting from zero right okay greater than the current index the, or the current number so i want something to happen i want next dot class list dot remove or add sorry we will add the height and then else so if else so oh i remove the high because it's already not the end else and else here is the end of the question i want a question printed to be none the answers it was answers put in i think uh yeah answers dot inner html to be zero so i remove everything i appended dot inner html and then for this part start dot inner text or inner html to be equal to restart and then the start dot class list remove i will remove the height okay so we just need to make here let's add some space and this one will be for change pack ground okay so we just want to see what we have right here indeed so here we got the next when I click on next, it doesn't work right now because we didn't give any order yet. But now it's working. So what I just did right here, it will here it will uh, make for this condition and remove the height from the next. It works, right? But the next uh, button doesn't work right now because we didn't set anything for it. But what we what we will set first is for changing background color which we will do in the next video good luck and have fun hi and welcome back and now let's add for the changing so here let's get this one which is taking the document dot party and the correct so as it is part we can go here and add for this function so let's make a function right here yeah it's starting from here function and then we can copy this from here change the peg ground and then the parameters here will be for the uh, for the first one let's make it for the element and correct which one will be the variable which also a parameter so here we will go to an another function which is called clear and i want to clear for the element okay so i went to this one with the document.body and the correct so when i clear i clear the document.body okay so if correct which meaning if one which is true if true i want element which is document dot body element dot class list dot add i will add the class of correct which is inside the css got the background color of the green else i want to remove so i will remove or just add wrong okay so for this part it is really good let's see what we got on the screen right here so it's not working yet uh, i think because of the clear so we can just make for function clear 
And for the clear, we're gonna take the same element parameter. So, and also when I go to this one, it wanna me it want me to make with the element of this one, which is document dot body. So here I will remove remove the correct and also remove the wrong. So what's going on here? When I click on next and then I go to another question, it was either true or false, right? But I wanna make here, I wanna remove the correct or the wrong when I go to another question. That's why we use clear before the if and else condition. So start winter, yeah, it's working. But next question, it's not working right now. Okay, so here we got for change background color and for the clear, we can just add some space right here. And this one, we can make it to clear. Okay, so this is perfect. Now we're done from this part. What we will do in the next video is to add for the next. So when I click on next, I want something to happen, right? And that's what we will do, but in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Hi and welcome back and now we will add for the next. What do you want to make for the next? I'm going to give you something right here. When I click on the next, where, 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 yes, it will show the question according to the shuffle, the current number. So what I want to do here is to increase the current number by one. So it will give me the new idea from the shuffled array. So that's what we will do. And also I will remove the class list. I will remove the class of correct or wrong from the body and show the question according to this new current number. So let's do that. But before also we do that, we will go to the reset state, which is equivalent to removing to make sure everything is removed. So here we can go here, add some space, add a comment, clicking on next. And then what we will do right here is to make next dot add event listener, which is the click. And then we will make a function with empty parameters because we just got one next. Oh, this is a comma, not a dot. And here we will make current index or the current number plus plus. And then we will go to reset state. And then after this part, we will make show question for the shuffled and the current number. So I will go to the shuffled question and create a number and make the new one appearing for the new current number. And now we just need to type the reset state to make it work. So for this one right here, we will make next dot class list dot add hide. And then else we will make answer puddings or it was answers, right? Answers. But let's just make it like that and see what we got when we get when we do that. So start JavaScript next. So this is a problem. It's showing me this one. So when I go to the reset state, the first thing I want to do is to remove is to add the height to the next because the next is still there. So I want to remove it. And also I want to remove the uh, the old answers. And as I told you, it moves in sequence. So it will do that and then that. So we need to think about what I need to do before I show the question. I want to remove all the answers. So answers dot inner text or inner HTML. Doesn't matter now. I like the text content. So let's make a text content equal to none. 
and also the question the question printed dot text content to be equal to zero and also i want to remove body dot classes dot remove i want to remove the height and also remove uh sorry remove the correct and also remove the wrong so let's see what we have on the screen right here and then we will be done from this part start javascript right next let's give a random no 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 indeed so now it's true next do you like winter yes so now it gave me a restart the questions are over i will go back to the restart and as you can see from here we got for do you like js winter what are you learning right now and that's what we answered okay so this is perfect let's try to add some questions more questions to make sure everything is working fine uh i'm thinking about a question right here okay we can make uh, okay uh do you love or do you like mcdonald's so we can make here yes and no everyone like mac so we can just type here true and then we can create another one right here which will be the last one we can add something like here uh do you use bootstrap 5 we, we already got a, a course for the bootstrap 5 you can check it out either you are from the uh, tutorials point udemy or even skillshare so here we can make it yes for bootstrap no for bootstrap we can see what we have here start you like js if i type not really you got indeed winner yeah mac yes what are you learning right now i am learning the javascript next bootstrap yes so now the end okay so now this is working fine and we got no problem with this quiz app now we are done from everything we really need to know inside the js itself this will be enough for building any project you want all i just want you to do is to practice more on you want to make exercises so you can just search on code pen i'm going to give you the code pen right here code pen uh, this one make the screen larger and then you get a search for the javascript J javascript let's search for something like uh, javascript project for an example and then let's see what we have here okay so we can search for i want to tell you something also that there is something like put js and all so what you just want to search for is vanilla javascript like that so this is the pure javascript so you can search for anything right here a retirement calculator you can search for the this calculator and then we can make 70 or even 40 and submit so it will show me something like that you can click on view in editor and then you can view the source code and then you can try to practice more in order to be more professional in the javascript what i just want you to do is to click on how it's working try it several times try to think how it is working and then try to code it yourself do not look at this code you can make it like that and even uh, from here minimize javascript editor so try to think about how it's working if i click like that does it work because it's not a number if i type 90 you could have already you can you could have retired already so try to think about how they are working and also you got more than 
this one you get all color hex plug you can make it anything you want and try to think how it is working okay and then we will move to the api projects from this from the next video so good luck and have fun and welcome in this video we will add for the google map project which is using the api the first thing we will do here is to search for the google developer map and click on the platform documentation okay if you don't have an account on google you should create one to use the api if you don't have one you will not be having the access into this map and here i want to talk about something also here it will ask you for the public address in order to use the api enter your credit uh, information do not worry about it i did it just now so it gives you 300 dollars to use for 90 days and when the time is over it will send you an email whether you need to continue or not either you click on i don't want to continue or even you left the email it will not charge you it will not charge you until you click i want to continue then we will go to get started okay so it's make it's taking me to this page okay we're just waiting okay okay it takes me to this page it it might take you to another page which is showing you something like here a model with api key make sure you got this api key right here you can just copy and place it anywhere because we will use it for this project and after you close for the api key it will get you to the page of the maps you will choose the map of the with that has the javascript text and then you will click on the marker because we will use the marker and in case if you have this page for as mine we will click on the select project and then create new project and then right here we can call it anything like google maps and click on create and now we are on the page project just loading okay okay we're just waiting to see what happened okay so now we got this page what i will do right now is to click on this page i want to maximize the screen loading okay and what we will do sorry it's not the project it's not the new project we will create for this one which is the new project i get this name for another project so this is the new one okay so here we are on this page which is using from the javascript api and all of that we need to use for the javascript right so we will click on the javascript and then it will take you to another page now you will click on enable to be able to use the api that the google will produce for you okay we're just waiting to get the data okay it must be enabled now okay so click back here again i hope it works now and then you're gonna click here and generate the api key because i want to use this one okay so here we are for this one you will leave this page right now and then what you will do is to go to another tap right here and make for the google map js api okay and then you will click on this one
okay we're just waiting and then what we will do right here is to scroll down and here we got the html code we will copy this one copy and go to our page and paste it okay so let's maximize the screen right here so we don't need this one or this one because we will take it from the google or we can just create my hours and here the script it will ask you for the api key the one that we we created just now so we can go back to the firefox the api key copy this one and paste it and instead of, instead of uh, the api key typed here and then right here it will call back the init map you don't need to understand this line okay so here we will just type the script and add a function which is called the same as here init map and then we will open the bracket and leave it empty right now that's how we can get the api code for the google map and in the next video we will add more for this project we will know how we can display the map into our page so good luck and have fun okay guys and now we are ready to add for this map we need just to make it on a live server uh, we can make on the live server so it will roll itself every time i save here so here we got it for the title so when i change anything in the title it will be displayed here so i don't need to go here and refresh okay so the first thing we want to do here is to add a function and call it init map which is the same as here and then let's try to add a location on the map so we can make ver options or anything you can call it anything you want and then we will make this zoom which is the zoom of the map and then we will make for the center and for the center right here we will make it as you can see from here when we scroll down this is for the javascript right so here what we will do we can make the screen smaller so we can see what's going on here the var options so here we can add for the center as you can see from here we cut the lat and the long we can go to any one here and search for something like uh, tokyo lat and latitude and longitude and then we got it here we will copy this one and make it for the lat the lat to be like that and the longitude to p this one okay so we can scroll a little bit down where is it right here or to be to be the same as here we can make it like this one where is it this one right here so we can make it or we can make it in a variable it's okay and we will display the variable here instead of this uh, instead of this code so here what we will do after this part is to go and make a variable for the map var map sorry inside the function and outside the variable var and call it map and let's make the map equal to or let's make it light map to be the same as here light map and then we will make the map equal to new google maps dot map and then we will take the document dot get it element by id for the map the same as here the document dot get element pi id for the map and then the other parameter will be for the variable of the options the same as i got this here and make it like that copy this 
and make it here. It will be typically the same, but let's make it inside a variable. You can make both ways if you want so. Okay, so after this part, let's see what we have on the screen when we do that. We don't have anything here because we because we didn't display the C's as of this part. So let's make here style map up in the bracket height. Let's make it to 500 pixels and width to 500 pixels also. Okay, so here we got the map on the screen and we got no problem with that. Now, let's know how we can add a marker on the map. We can scroll down, declaring, loading this JS. Okay, just like that, map option. It's not on this page. So we can just search here. I think we got the search here. Marker on the map. Okay, so here we can click on marker. Because we want to search together how we can do that. Markers. And then we can scroll down. And this is how we can add a marker right here. So it tells you how to add the marker. So everything you will need, you can get it inside the documentation of the Google. Either for the Google, for YouTube, the Twitter, and all of that. Okay, so let's move for the same sequence as here. What we can do right here and right now, it tells you right here, you will make for the new Google map. So we can go after this one and make the, uh, we will make right here, okay just like that we can make for new google dot maps for the marker open the bracket like that and then we will get the position the position right here it was the constant of this one so we can make a constant that contains this part so we can make this one inside a constant so let's make a const right here and this one let's call it my l a t l n g the same as the did here in the web browser and then we will copy this one like that and also let's make for the zoom but we don't really need a variable for, for the zoom because for the marker, we don't need the zoom. As you can see from here, we don't need the zoom. So here, it tells you to add the position. Position. And the position will be the constant of the my lat lng. And then add the variable of the map. So make sure if you have another variable for the map here, it will be displayed instead of this one. And add a title for this part. Title. Title. And we can make it anything, something like hello world. Let's save and see what we have on the screen right now. So now we can, so now we mark this in Japan in Tokyo and you can get any place you or any location you want okay and now that's good okay okay and this is enough for this video in this video we will learn more about how we can mark with more advanced way so good luck and have fun okay so here we want to learn more about adding markers if i want to add another marker right here we can copy this one and paste it here so now we can create a new one like we can get from the zagreb make it like that here we can make it for the uh, lat of this one and for lng to be for this one and then we can see what we have right here 
and we got it here for Zagreb. But we want to be more smarter than that. Do I need to add this line for each one I want to add? Of course not. We need to be smarter and use the JavaScript that we learn it in a different way. What we can do here, we can comment this part to add a new thing right here. No, I don't need that. Okay, and what we will do here, we will add a function. And then the function will be called each time I add an address. So we can add a function and call it. Let's call it something like uh, add marker. So let's make a function and call it add marker up in the bracket. And we, we need a parameter right here because we will use several locations. Okay, just like that. And then we can make a variable and call it marker, which is equal to Google dot maps dot marker. And then we will choose from here the position to be for the prop dot coordinates that we will type inside the function when I call it pack and then I want the map that I want to display this location on to be the map the variable of that map so make sure if you got on another name for this variable to be displayed in for this one right here instead of this map okay so this is good and what we will do right here we will call the function several times so to call the function we will make add marker and let's make it equal to properties but we need to make something instead of properties so we can get this from here copy this one and make it here but already uh we, we need all of that so we can make it like that here we can make this one and make coordinates and like that and then we can save and see what we have on the screen when we go I think it was Zagreb no we got a problem with this part so we want to check out the problem okay okay so let's search for the problem of this part right here the coordinates okay what is the problem that I call pack coordinates okay let's search on the map do we have any marker no we don't have so there's a problem with this part and marker the properties the variable of the marker coordinates okay is this the same yes we didn't type new right here so let's see what we have now so here we got it on japan and this is working perfect Okay, and then right here, we want to add for the content. So let's make it for the content. We can add a comma after this part and add content. And the content right here, content, this one will be for Tokyo. Okay, and then after this part, we will go right here. And in case if we have content, I want to display it but if I don't have content I don't want to display it so here we can add if condition if prop dot content is true so I want to do something what I want to do here is to add var and let's call it info window and make it equal to the new Google dot maps and all of that is included inside the documentation of the Google dot info window this info window must be the same as the what we typed here so here we will make it like that and then we will make the content to be equal to prop dot content and then i want to do something right here also when i click on the marker I want the info to appear so we will make marker 
in this case we will use add listener instead of add event listener listener you can make add event listener if you want and a function we don't need parameters right here because we already got our one here okay so now we want to make for the info window dot open I will open for the map and the marker and else console log no or we can make an alert alert so let's see what we have on the screen when we do that let's try to click here so here we got Tokyo let's try uh, to add in another one without the content okay so let's call this content for Zagreb or deleted to test without the content the Zagreb right here we will copy this one for the north and this one for the east just like that and go back here no so here we don't got one and let's try here to click on zagreb so it doesn't work yeah because we don't have the event listener so we can make it like that copy and paste it here so we are waiting this to be reloaded and then we can go back to click on the zagreb so it tells me no it doesn't have so we can just add instead of this content we can add for this location doesn't have a content or just content let's try this now okay just like that so we got here for the tokyo and this one this location doesn't have content okay and this is perfect and we did a lot with this part what we want to do as next is to make it in a different way we want to make we want to be smarter and do not use this one there's a property that we can use which is the array if you are familiar with this one and this is easier for you you can choose this one and use it but in the next video we will talk about another way that we can display instead of this one so good luck and have fun and welcome back now we will do a different thing right here and what we will do right here is to add an array instead of all of that so what we just will do right here we can comment this part from here to here because it will be replaced as an array so let's make an array right here and let's call it uh, places or locations and then open the array and let's make the first element of the array contains coordinates coordinates and then let's make this one for the tokyo so we can just copy this from here and paste it here and the second one will be for the content so we can make the content right here content to be for the tokyo okay and then we can add in another one right here okay we can just copy this one and sorry pay copy and paste and we will change the latitude and also the longitude okay and this one we will make it for the what happened uh did we make something wrong yes i think so copy and paste this was 15. and this one was zagreb and what we will what we want to do here 
is to recall the add marker for each one inside. So what we can do for this part right here is to make a for loop that we learned before for variable i equals zero and the variable in this i is smaller than the locations dot length so i want to hear i plus plus so when the location is greater than or equal to i the function will stop and that's actually what i do right here when the i is equal to the locations dot length i don't have more locations so i want to stop the i okay so what we will do here is to make for the add marker and i will add for the locations for each i so for each i so let's see what we have on the screen right here so we got for japan and hopefully for the zagreb let's try another one here uh, we can call it for california california and we can add a comma right here don't forget the comma otherwise it will not work copy and paste okay so make this one for the north this for the west and let's leave the content empty and see what we have now when i click on the california we got for south korea i don't know why it gives a different position a different location but it's okay we can make it another one right here we can click here so the cushion doesn't have content if i click on japan we got for the tokyo if i click on the zagreb i got the zagreb let's try to put a negative right here a negative so here i hope we can find it inside the us so here it's inside the us so this was the problem if it twist we will add a negative okay so this works and we got no problem with it i want to add something right here a property when i click on the map i want to add a location so let's do that we can make it at the top right here and we can make it inside so let's add a comment right here or we can make it here adding marker on click okay so let's do that what we want to do here is to when i click on the map so we can make google dot maps dot map dot event sorry event dot add listener this one is equivalent to add event listener so you can add add event listener or event so after this part we will make for the map click and here i want something to happen which is function of event because we will have a different parameters event or e or anything we want we can make it just e because i think we used event right here okay and then what we will do after this part is add marker so we can add marker and then we will make it for the uh, like that coordinates event dot lat lng so let's see what we have on the screen right now when i click okay yeah it doesn't work i think we got a problem with this part and we need to search for it yeah it's e not event i forgot about it so let's try now to see what we got on the screen and now it is working okay the last step that we need to know is how we can detect our location right now and that's what we will do but in the next video good luck and have fun so now we want to talk about the new thing right here 
how I can detect my location. So what I want to do here is to inside inside this function also, I will make window dot add event listener. And this one will be for the load. So when I load the page, I want to with empty parameters, open the bracket. And here we can make let long and let let and here if navigator navigate navigator dot geographic location if it's true i want to do something so here navigator dot geolocation or we can just use the console look first to see what we have on the screen so but first geolocation dot get current position let's call it a reference a reference position so for this one i want a function open the bracket and let's make console log for the reference position okay so it tells me for the access to the to the location and then we can make the console log right here so it gives you here the geometric location with the latitude and for the longitude what we want to do right here is to get which is exporting the uh, latitude and the longitude and import them to here so what we will do right here is to make long equal to position as you can see it's inside the coordinates so here sorry this one is the reference reference position not like that like that and then the inside the chords and i want here the longitude and for the latitude we will copy this one is it a constant no property okay let latitude okay so and then what we will uh, what we want to do here is to make for this part we will copy this part right here where 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 add marker so we will get for the add marker and paste it here what's the problem with this part do we have a problem okay okay it tells me we get a problem but it's okay right now we can see very soon okay so do we use this before yes yes so let's make this lat this long do we have a problem right now so what's the problem with this part uncode event is not defined okay so let's keep going and then we can see what happened okay and then after the add event as you can see from here we can make it this way copy and paste and for this one it will be for the let's make this one let this one long the let right here will be for this let and this one be will be for the long so yeah, I hope we have no problem right here. So, okay. It's not working, so we want to search for the problem right here. Let's open the console log and see what's the problem with this part. Add marker is not defined. So I think we typed it in this wrong way, and I hope this is just the problem. Okay, so what's the problem again? Allow. Do we have any problem? No, now it's working. And we got no problem with this part and it's already working with all the locations. And that's all about this project. And from the next video, we will talk about the weather app. So good luck and see you on the next project.
Hi and welcome back. In this video, we will start for the weather app project, the last project in this course. So here, uh, the first thing we will do right here is to make HTML5. And then we will connect between this file and the CSS. I believe it was style.css. Okay, that's good. And then let's add some HTML for this video. Uh, the first one we will do here is the weather container and then we will make for the search container that we will search from and then we will add input with a type of text and let's give it a class of search so when I search it will give me the result of the weather and put in with search okay so do we have anything here yeah we got this and after this container right here we will add for the weather content so here we can make it with weather i was about to give it for the weather section but now whether it's okay because to make it shorter and h1 with class of city let's make it three dots and this will contain the name of the city so we can just type here weather in and this will be dynamic okay and then we can make for p for the temperature so we can make it just temp and we will add an image an image for the source and leave it empty class let's give it a class of icon because it will be an icon from the web open weather map which is the website that we'll use for this API project, which is a popular one in the case of the weather app. And now, P with class of description. And let's say the description empty. And after this part, the humidity. Humidity right here, humidity. And let's leave it empty right now. And then we will add for the uh, the wind speed. So we can make here P with wind and leave it also empty. And that's all for the HTML. Let's now how let's now know how we can get the API code from the upon weather app map. And in this case we will use the fetch. So we used the systematic uh, one which was for the google and you will use it for a lot and a lot of api projects and the second way to do the api project is the uh, fetch and i'll show you the difference and when you can use the systematic for the google or the fetch let's go here i go to the web open weather map you need to have an account so you can just get an account from sign up here okay so now we will after you sign up we will go to the api okay what we want here is current weather data you can make any one you want right here but in our case we want this one okay so what we will do here it's getting you to get this one copy and paste it here now we need to get the city so we can search for pi city pi city name so we don't need to get the longitude and the latitude here we can type zagreb but we still need an api key so we can go to my profile my api keys so here we got mine so we can copy this one and paste it here so here we got all of this information in case you do, if you don't have one you can activate one from here and if this page gave you an error i think it was 401 this doesn't mean you don't have the, uh, the api key it means it's still loading the api key is not yet activated but it will be activated within i think half an hour to two hours okay and now this is good and now we're done from adding the html and how we can get the api key from the open weather map 
In the next video, we will know how we can display data inside this part. So, good luck and have fun. For the Google map that we said before, it tells you a sequence to move on, right? Which was some code, but here it gives you a website to go to in order to find the thing that you need. Like that, you will copy this and paste it here, find the city name, the API key, and then it will open you a long page that you want to take your info from this one. But to make it work, so you need to, so you need to fetch in this case, but in the other case, it tells you some code to type or to copy and paste. This will be for the systematic as Google. So this is the difference between the fetch and the systematic way. And these are the two ways that you will use ever in your projects. Okay. And then right here, we will make a function. And this function, let's call it fetch weather. And here, let's set this variable to be equal to function and the city. So this can be considered as a variable if you want to make it as a variable and not as this way. But it's okay like that. And open the bracket. And here we will make the fetch. The fetch right here. And what we want to do right here is to go to this part copy this, which is the thing that we want to test for. But we will make it inside too. And now I'm fetching, which is I am getting the data from here. And we want this to be dynamic. So we will make it like that. Delete this one, add the plus. Okay, and here it will be the city. To be dynamic, the city that will be entered from the user and the API key, we can make it like that, plus API key. And this is how it will work. So API key is a constant, and the city is the one that we will get from the user. Okay, and now that is good. Okay, we get a problem here, so we can just call this cities, in order to not get error from this city and this city, so we made this one cities. Okay, so it asked me what do you want to make for the fetch. We can make here then and we can call this one response. You know, most of web developers call this response. Okay, and after the response right here, I want a function. A function that will take response dot json. You actually don't need to understand this to use the API key. Just when it's not necessary to use it. And after then, it means right here, it will wait until I get the response, which is all the data from here. And then after we get the response, I want to make this for info. And then this, this response for the info which is for the city display weather weather which is a function that we will make with the info and that's what we will do okay so do we have any problem right now yes this one okay now the problem is solved and that's what all we need right now and then we will add for the function which is display weather. We will make it here as a variable display weather and make it equal to a function and the function got a parameter with info. So when I call this function, I will make it here with this one. So this will be replaced to here for the parameter. Okay. So I think this is enough for this video. In the next video, we will add for this function. So good luck and have fun. Hi and welcome back. Let's keep going and add more JavaScript. But before we do so, we want to make sure it's working. So what we will do right here, we will change this one and make console 
dot log this one will be for the info and let's up in inspect okay and then we will make weather result dot fetch weather but we need to we just need to change this one and make it any city let's make it zagreb so here let's look and enter so it gives me everything i need right here so for the fetch before you start anything right here you click on everything you need so we will need the description we will need the id for the icon we will need the main i think we will need the main we need the speed and also the temperature so let's see where the temperature is okay the temperature the clouds the coordinates okay la longitude no i don't want that the weather object okay description icon and where is it i think we can make a search right here no so where is the temperature the temperature is inside i think it was inside the main so we need to search inside the main where is the main okay okay the coordinates weather like that we can make the screen larger and make this also larger because we want to get everything we really need inside this one so we need to get the temperature right here so we need to search for it let's search for the temperature right here okay the coordinates the main yes so here we got the temperature and it feels like and the temperature minimum and humidity so the first thing we will do here is to take a screenshot from this because you will need it inside the javascript code because here we are using a live server so it will not wait for us to get it from here so we need to get the info from here and we will get it by the array method we used in the last project so we took a screenshot right here and here let's make more we can make a const of name of the city and make it equal the info and that's it and info dot name so here i'm getting the name but there's something different right here is that i can make it like that equal info and this is equivalent to what we did for the const name equal info dot name this is equivalent and then const icon so this one is to search for the const name uh, the const name uh, the const info dot name and make it equal to the constant of name icon and description and make it equal to info weather weather is an array so i will just take from it the zero okay and then const for the speed and for the speed we will make it equal to info dot wind and for the last one we will use the temperature the temp let's make it temp and humidity and make it equal to info dot main because they were inside the main okay so let's make a console log right here console log name icon description description and also we can make for the humidity or the speed as first speed temp and humidity okay so we can see what we have on the screen right now we need to change 
this one we already made it zagreb so hey we didn't make that so let's set this pack again this dot display weather we will display it by the info let's see what we have on the screen when it's reloaded it tells me we get a problem with this part so what is the problem right here so we need to check out this problem okay okay we can try to fetch the weather right here we can make here for the uh, console or sorry weather result dot fetch weather so now it works it goes back with the name and for the icon and all of that it works we got no problem with this part okay so now we don't need this one we can delete it and what we will do right now is to change the content and if it works we got no problem cities equal to sorry the cities dot text content dot text content is equal to the weather in plus the name and this will be according to the uh, input so let's keep going right here and then after this part we will make the ic dot source we will make it equal to this link it's not available now on the website so we can just get it from here and this is the icon that we got where here here okay and then after this part we will make the temperature the temperature dot text content and we will make it equal to the temperature is like that and then we will make it to the temp oh the plus temp plus fahrenheit because i think it was fahrenheit and then the description so we can make here desk dot text content and make it equal to description and this will be for description okay that's good humidity dot text content and make it equal to humidity plus humidity plus percent okay and for the last one for the wind win dot text content to be equal to wind speed like that plus the speed plus kilometer kilometer per hour okay and this is for this part and this is what the text content will be displayed instead this is enough for this video and in the next video we will add the search which will take the value of the search and make it to another function so good luck and have fun so now this is the last video for this project now let's make a search and make it to a function actually this is search so here this will be taking the value of the input so this which means for the value this fetch weather document dot query selector for the search i am taking the value of the search okay so i'm gonna take a value so i'm getting this value so this one its value and then outside this function i will make document dot query selector i will choose the pudding i think this is the only pudding we got 
uh, 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 uh. yeah, the only button. A button dot add event listener. And for this one, click. Then a function. Open the bracket, open the parameters, and then I will call the weather result and make it for the search. So this is this is a sequence that you will use for each project in the Fitch. Recently or actually for all the projects using the Fitch. So this code is all what you need. And for the Google, something like the Google, you will just go to the website, copy and paste the code and implement it inside your code. That's all about the Fetch and the Google. Let's test it right now. We can just type something like Zagreb search. So here it's working and this is the icon. Uh, we can search something like the, uh, uh, let's call it New York. Okay, it doesn't change what happened. Do we have a problem? Right here, I think New York is not defined. So let's try something like Tokyo. It doesn't work when I click on something else. So this is a problem right so let's try another one right here what happened oh we didn't change that so let's change it right now this was the problem city plus okay so let's see what we have now when i click on zagreb so we got this for zagreb and let's try for tokyo and I hope it works right now. Yeah, now it works. And let's try for New York. And now it actually works. And we got no problem with that. And the project is working perfect. If you have any problem with any projects, you can ask in the Q&A. And this, will, this is the code that you will need for every fetch project. And for the Google, you can just copy and paste and you will find what you need inside it. So if you want to make for YouTube API, you will just go to the developer of the YouTube, follow the instructions and make the same as the Google as we did. And also for the Twitter, for Spotify and I don't remember examples right now. And so this is all the projects. Thank you for completing the journey and I hope to see you in another course. You can check out our, our Bootstrap 5 course, either you are from Skillshare, Udemy, or tutorial, Tutorials Point. You can find them all there. So, thank you and check our course. Wait for our other courses.